Hey, what's up? I'm Zanji Does, and this is a series that I have on my channel called Zanji Does Tea. If you've never been here before, your first time seeing this, this is an advice series where people are meant to submit via an email that will be on the screen right here. And you submit, I read your story, give you advice, people in the comment give you advice. Because this series is so brand new and it's so tiny, I just get so like ugh, it's horrible allergies because the series is still fairly new and the audience is still very small we are instead going through reddit so in the meantime what the series will look like is we're giving people advice on reddit in hopes that you the viewer will one day feel inclined enough to submit a story to um the email for Zanjita's tea and hopefully get advice from me and people in the comments so in the meantime, we've been doing Reddit. If you want to follow me on there, you can. You can see I also do, I give advice on that as well that I don't even like film. The reason that I've picked Reddit is because, I'm just going to pull it up here, is because I feel like I saw that so many people would ask for advice on that app. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll use that as a means to get the viewer inclined to see my to you know you know like i'm giving you a preview of what i have to offer you know what i mean so a lot of people on youtube do this where they sit down fan submit things that they need help with and yeah so a little more background i did go to school for psychology and art and i did want to be a therapist at one point in my life which this is my very informal version of that and i decided to kind of let that dream go and fo focus more on business and marketing but <laughs> every day every day i'm changing things so that's besides the point usually we sit down at this table i finally got my mic working if you've been watching my episodes this is episode three if you've been watching my episodes i have been dealing with this stupid mic and we got it to work and i'm so i'm gas i'm honestly excited i'm so gas um usually we have our mic we got a little sippy sippy here i also bought a new lens i don't know if y'all can tell like y'all see me y'all see me glowing up okay period so anyway we um what i do is i just save stories that i've seen and i sometimes give advice like like i'll write it while i'm saying it but not usually because it's kind of a minute but um we got a mango smoothie today wow you ever get a smoothie you just like want to finish it all in one setting let's get started i'm very excited um Nail cam. Today's nail cam is worth or sex, okay? If you know, you know. I'll put the page on the screen. So, hmm, yeah, I I save a bunch of these and I'm just like, okay, some are long, some are short. Um, as you know, or if you don't know how Reddit works, people just post whatever and they will like, like, like they go on to get feedback, it seems like most of the time. There are... I choose between very deep topics, very light topics, like, you know, there's, um, sorry if you see me scratching my nose throughout the video, I have allergies and they just get so bad, it's, it's, it's unbearable, I know, it's like, oh my god, but staying on topic, yeah, I just choose whatever, obviously, you know, YouTube has rules and things you can't say, so I will substitute some words, alright, let's get started. So I've saved a lot over <clears throat> the past weeks because I haven't had time to sit down and film. Girl, I just have so many. I have like 15 plus. Okay. Mm, let's do this, okay? Let's, let's keep it light to start off. The title of this is How to Look for a New Job While Employed? Question mark. This person says, I like my current job, but feel that it's time to move on and have a lot of anxiety about applying for something new while still being employed how can i do this it's really not that hard to see she's i feel like this person's really thinking hard about it but let's read their story so i work at a relatively small company and am one of three people in my specific department i have been at my job for a little over 10 months and i've been in school finishing my bachelor's the whole time period it's the multitasking for me i really enjoy my job and my workplace has been pretty flexible with my school schedule for most of the time here. My hours were limited due to the pandemic mm -hmm, and budget issues. But for the last few months, they've had me on part-time as a kindness to me while I finish my schooling. 
Okay, so she's just explaining her job situation. Okay. This job isn't related to my degree slash career. I have a degree in genetics. It doesn't pay well. It's outdoor manual labor. It's taxing. She lives in California. She's just, she or he is complaining about their job and how they don't really like it and they don't have time off on weekends and they don't have time to spend with their partner or their friends. And they're saying that that's the reason they want a new job. And they're kind of like, this is under. It seems like they're kind of beating themselves up for the job. Like they're trying to like convince the reader. First of all, y'all see that? My poor plant, this is a real bonsai too. Embarrassing. Anyway, I have no idea how to go about this. <sighs> I This is their issue. I don't want to just tell my employer, hey, I'm looking for a new job. Because I feel like no matter how I phrase it, he's going to be upset and start looking for a replacement. And especially if I don't end up getting a new job. My remaining time in my current place is going to be awkward. I had bad experiences in the past with employers contracting my current job. Um, instead, in spite of me checking the do not contact box, that caused some bad tension and blood with the old employer. That's really unfortunate. Basically, I have no idea how to look for a new job while still employed. I'm really stressing about it. And let's see what people said. This one person said, don't tell your boss you're looking for a new job. Obviously, you can go south. Apply a job on the side. When you get an offer, then you'll tell them about the two weeks. And then someone said, you just do the two weeks leave and then get the unemployment. So here's my advice on this. It seems like a pretty minute issue, if you will. It really depends on the employer and their relationship with the manager. I have this tendency to kind of, sorry, I'm just holding my arms because I'm a little chill. I have a tendency to befriend the man, befriend the manager. Um, sorry, a truck just drove by. I have a tendency to befriend the manager and it's not because I'm kissing butt, but it's because these people just are, I guess maybe they just like my work ethic and they just are like, okay, I really appreciate this, this employee, their, um, work ethic, yada, yada, whatever the case may be. But it really depends on your relationship with the manager. And I really encourage you moving forward to at least befriend one manager where you can always have that as a go-to for a reference. No one ever tells you that in school, at least I didn't get told in school that you need to have good relationships with managers so that, because when you apply to another job, those people will be called yada yada. Now don't get me wrong, I've had those experiences where people, managers are petty and cringy like that and they're just like, oh my god no like they'll say bad things about you so that you don't get referred to the new job or whatever so all in all i've been always in my opinion in my experience i've always been honest hey or maybe i'll even lie about it hey i gotta start school soon so i gotta start working around that area so um be honest or at least be realistic with your lie about it for this job, like, do people really, are people really caring that much is my question. Like, is the your manager really that pressed about it? And I understand, it seems like this person had a bad past with situations like this. So, knowing that, I would be honest. Honestly, I would just be honest. Like, hey, like, because of school and what I'm trying to go to school for, I think it's more appropriate if I leave this job and I try to work somewhere else. I'm maybe you lie and say, I'm trying to work closer to school, whatever. So they seemed lenient as is in regards to giving you part-time or stuff. And I've had a job like that where they knew I was in school and the job was supposed to be full-time, but they gave me part-time. And I did have the same situation where I was like, okay, this job ain't cutting it. And I did feel bad because I was like, Oh my god, they've been so accommodating for me. But the reality is, people are that uh, people that are respectful, not respectful, but like they know how life is, and they know that money is important, and that you are. Also, I'm assuming you're, you're in college, so you're not probably not. I don't say not old because um, adults like people 30 plus or 40 plus go to college. But I'm assuming you're in your 20s, right? So this person, your employer knows it's the beginning of your life, your adulthood. And that's just the reality. You cannot be somewhere if you're not making money. Like, how can you pay for rent? How can you pay for things? Like, these issues are not going to pay for rent. And honestly, sometimes it has to be that ultimatum. And 
that would be my advice for this person. And if you have a similar situation, again, you can email at the bottom there. Um, what would you do for this situation? What would you um, advise for this person? Leave that in the comments below. We can go to the next story now. Let's see. So today's next story is... We're gonna just I I want I'm gonna go from zero to a hundred right now because I'm feeling good. Um, today's today's second story is how can I have a conversation with my girlfriend and she is cheating. Now I don't know if I made it clear on this YouTube channel, but cheating is not is not it. I'm already bad with forgiving and forgetting. I'm very stubborn about that, so already I do have a bias. But let's hear this person out, and let's see what we can, um, how we can help this person. There is a lot that comes into this story. She had an ex that she had a rocky relationship with, and since then she really hasn't let him go. Red flag number one: We had three big fights about her still wanting to be with him. Mm, red flag number two. I told her the last time that if she doesn't want to be with me, then I'll do her the favor and break up with her. Mm -hmm. So she can be with him. That sounds reasonable, right? Um, she didn't want that, and I told her that I will stay, but she needs to move on. Otherwise, this relationship will go anywhere. Correct, they say. Recently, my friend has been telling me incidents where she has been either alone or being with her ex. So before we even go any further... Have you set up that boundary? Like, hey, no, you can't be chilling with. Like, for me, you cannot be chilling with your ex if you're trying to move on. Yeah, I say like it's tricky, you know, and I feel like with you, you need to set that boundary up. Like, I don't really, like, I guess, you know, I know there's people that are friends with their exes and yada yada. I am if you don't know. Let's continue reading. She normally hangs out with her friend group and he is a part of it. Okay. So I should have cut right in reading before I gave my fucking advice. Anyways. um, <laughs> So yeah, he's a part of the friend group. Makes sense. So sometimes it's not really her fault um, that they're together sometimes. And my girlfriend claims, that's what he wrote, claims that there aren't, they aren't friends and whatnot. My friend's girlfriend has caught them recently being at this event, sitting alone together my girlfriend told me that she was going with her friend group to the event, and I don't know if my friend's girlfriend knows the entire group, but she claims she saw them alone, and she also told my friend that she caught them being alone, walking together sometimes. I don't know why you're, like, emphasizing that. You know, like, the walking or the sitting, like, point is, yeah, they've been chilling, right, by themselves, probably having deep talks about who knows what. I really am giving a huge run for the doubt you are. But sometimes it's hard knowing that she has admitted to having feelings for him. Yeah, what the, f like, I don't know what to do, especially she asked me to move in with her recently. It's a huge jump, and I want an honest conversation with her, and I don't know who to really trust or believe in. My first question is, does she want you to move in to see if she, like, likes you more than this person? You know what I mean? And this is a tricky situation, um, all in all, because... Even the sub, like, you, you threw in that bomb at the end. Like, she wants me to move in with her, too. Like, okay. You're not giving us history here. You know, I wish there was more details. Let me scroll and see if there's more. Yeah, well, people are saying that everybody is commenting that they feel like this person is her backup. Like, her rebound. And I don't really know if it's a rebound situation or maybe she's just... I wish there was more detail. And that's a, like a pointer to you if you feel like submitting a story today. Make sure you put a lot of details in your story so we can help put the pieces together. Because now I'm just left with more questions than advice. Because it's like, how long had it, has it been since y'all broke up? You know, these three big fights. What was said? You know what I'm saying? Why aren't you there when y'all hang out? You're, are you allowed to be there? Like, those are things that matter in a situation like this, I feel. I'm also like, you know, how did the moving in situation come about how does she express her feelings to you does she say i like this guy still but i really love you or i'm working on it you know what i mean so really maybe that's my advice ask more questions and let's try to give advice without the questions being answered so let's say this is your situation right 
my advice would be first of all that training that bus um my advice would be you need to communication is a big part of relationships okay and i do not understand how people have relationships without communication um however i've had friendships without good communication and i see how that could be faulty but in romantic relationships especially when you live with people if y'all communication skills is not down pat it's gonna be the hottest rest ever and i'm being serious about that okay so if y'all have no good communication skills no boundaries are being set people are separate on each other the list can go on i don't think that that move is right just yet because when you move in with someone y'all are gonna be in each other's face like this not necessarily in the same room every time which is the beauty of it but you need the communication skills because financially that is a thing you're doing together you do not want to play with people when it comes to finance and moving in and there's leasing problems and whoever's name is on the lease they can be like get the hell out of here i'm kicking you out or they could your name could be on the lease you break up that person leaves now the whole thing you're still you still need to pay that rent like y'all buy a house together same thing different rules so really 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 my number one tip is sit down and have that talk y'all need to have a mature talk about this because this is not funny this is not childish game like i'm assuming y'all are grown we are not playing this game you want him or you want me or you want yourself because i'm not going to be dealing with this where you know and then these friends coming to you and telling you kiki in and pitter patter pitter patter it's like are y'all gossiping with me or are y'all on my side? Are y'all trying to help the situation? Are y'all telling my girlfriend, hey, what you're doing is not right. Like, you really think your man would like that? Like, things like that where it's like, I need you to sit down and evaluate who you have around you at this moment and sit down with your partner and really figure out who the hell they are or what their intentions are because I just feel myself getting, like, frustrated for you because it's, it, it would piss me off. I'd be like, what the hell? So... That is my advice for this person. We're going to get a little deep here. The next one is titled, I've been stopped for almost five years. I need advice. I'll preface this by saying I've never been stopped knowingly. Um, and I'm giggling like nervous giggle. I do that a lot, by the way. Um, I've never been stalked that I know of, but I've heard it's very, very consuming. It's very, you just feel like your life is not yours anymore. And I don't wish that on anyone. I can imagine how frustrating it is. And trigger warning if you are a victim of being stalked, because it is victim like you are a victim of a crime like a hate crime like whatever you want to call it it's disgusting and no one deserves it so let's get started they say long story for clarity i'm a dude in texas um five years ago when i was 21 i'm 26 now a co-worker gave me a drink and said a customer bought it for me don't be doing that it had a phone number attached to it it's the thirst for me um along with the paper saying it was from a secret admirer giving very lifetime cute <laughs> um out of curiosity i called the number after work thinking it was someone i knew and it wasn't however it was whoever it was she said she thought i was cute and we talked and she seemed decent enough and we decided to go out sometime what a naive boy i was um I mean, it's innocent. It's kind of weird, but whatever, you know. So we meet up for coffee, and I'm instantly off put. Oh, <laughs> for starters, she's way older, like in her 40s. No, not the 40s. She said, "Hey, boo. Hey, boo." She said, "Here's the drink, hey boo." But right, let me talk. She's starting for 20 year old also she smells terrible and that's why i gotta be like hey it was fun on you i'm cutting you off anybody i would never understand people that can date people that smell bad like i 
Let me stop being rude. All right, I'm done. Uh, let me not go into this this tangent. But hygiene, guys, please. Um, like, really bad is what he says. It became pretty clear early on that she isn't all there mentally. Okay. I politely ended the date after about 20 minutes and we just weren't connecting. I told her we could be friends and that was a mistake. Okay. From then on, I would get 15 to 20 calls a day from her. She'd send me selfies that I didn't want. What well, kind of selfies? Because she would end up at my job every day and follow me around trying to talk to me. I engaged in light conversation with her just trying to be... Just trying to not be an asshole. Eventually, after a few weeks of 20 calls a day from her, hours and hours of her following me around and bringing me gifts, I told her she just needs to chill, relax. Stop trying to spend every walking moment, waking moment with me. Mm. That really made her mad. She insisted I was telling her that because she's a woman, I'm a misogynist. How, how fucked up in the head is she to say that? And I'm not trying to, um, I'm not trying to be, to shame, to disabled shame or, you know, disability shame. Okay. Um, and then he writes WTF with the little, the calls didn't stop and neither did her showing up on my job. Eventually told the managers and they told her that if she didn't stop talking to me, She'll be banned from the premises. Okay, I'm glad you said something because I was like, "What's what are we about to do? I blocked her number as well. Good. That's it, right? She'll get the hint right now. Right? No. She still showed up at my job and just stared at me. Not even trying to hide it. Just standing. Oh, my God. Ew. Just standing there gapping and staring at me. Like, what do you mean? She's like, <laughs> I'm going to take that part out. I'll just put it in whatever. But like, what do you mean get gaping and staring at me? Like, only rarely moving. So she's just like, <laughs> like a statue wide-eyed. She stared at me for hours every single day. Oh my God, that's fucking annoying. Like, go home. Go home. You don't got stuff to do. Go cook some food or something. Leave me alone. Go cook a nice meal for yourself. Watch, some show, watch a show and enjoy your afternoon. Why are you bothering me? Ugh. Every single day, I told the managers and they let me hide in the back every time she came in. I checked my call logs, which showed that she still called around 20 times a day, even though she was blocked. What the hell? First of all, you got an Apple phone? I don't know if you can check the block stuff. Hmm. I'm like, I'm about to be team Android. <laughs> okay, so over the course of a year or so, eventually the call stopped and I thought it was over. She even stopped showing up at work, or so I thought. Turns out she made friends with one of my coworkers and was sending her tons of drawings she did of me. Something's not right. You're right. Something's not right. I kind of feel bad for this person. Like the person that's pursuing. <sighs> Along with captions like, he's my Prince Charming. She shaved her head around this time. I came to grips with the fact that this lady is crazy crazy that's not a nice word if she really is mentally ill um work was aware of this and kept an eye out for her fast forward i get a girlfriend we date for a few years and everything goes great and we get engaged and the crazy ladies out of the picture dun 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 i thought i was about to say like also did she like how does she know you had a girlfriend like because it kind of seemed like she peeped you had a girl and was like okay okay say that say that say that and back up but we're about to find out was T. I get phone calls from random numbers. So this is out after some years. Ugh, this was a few years ago, so I don't remember why I answered, but it was a it was the crazy lady's sister. I didn't even know she had a sister and she's just she's just as crazy. Aw. She told me the only reason I didn't want to be with her sister is because I'm afraid to love and she's gonna take everything I love away from me. It's beef. It's beef for me, because what are you threatening me for? I curved you, stop being thirsty, like, period. And if this person is mentally ill or disabled, like, please get help. Like, this is not the way to cope. Like, what? Anyway, at this point, I'm horrified. 
I told my fiance everything so she can be on guard. I bought her a taser, a pepper spray. Tell work. I would have just went to another job. Like, the fact that you're still there. Ugh, they say there's not much they can do except keep an eye out for her. I called the police and they told me there wasn't anything they could do. And that's the police's issue is that they're always like, um, unless there's physical evidence, someone's been harmed, blah, blah, blah. We can't do nothing. Like, y'all always wait to the worst. Like, someone needs to fix that. I thought it really pissed me off. Um, soon after that, she started leaving notes and flowers on my car at my house. This lady followed me home. I called the police and they said she technically technically hadn't done anything illegal. So what I'm telling y'all, they don't give a sh till you get hurt or if that person like. And that's the thing is these people or these situations, even like abduction kids or something, or um like domestic abuse issues or emotional abuse they'll be like okay do you have evidence or this and you're calling the police and you're like this person's gonna kill me today and then the person they're like well there's no evidence yet you know and the person comes your abuser comes and you up and that was that one chance that you died like that's what i hate about like that shit like i don't wish on anyone i hope that doesn't happen to me like i cannot it's not. I changed my number, moved to a new address, and got a new job. I'm good, because I was going to say, like, you need to just let it go. For your safety. Like, it's just for your safety, honey. Like, you just got to do it. The following year, I lived entirely in paranoia. I was checking behind me while driving to see if I was being followed. I had nightmares every night. It was awful. Like, this person has PTSD to this point. Like, that's really unfortunate. After all 2020 of hearing nothing from her, I finally began to relax. Maybe COVID put her priorities straight, I thought. Even if not, she couldn't find me anymore. Y'all, that was like last year. Well, a week ago, guess what? My fiance starts getting messages from the crazy soccer on Facebook saying that crazy soccer is my true love. I don't even know how the soccer found out my fiance's name. She notified her work. What can I do? This has been going on all of my 20s and has no sign of stopping this lady clearly has mental health issues i'm constantly in genuine fear that she's gonna find where i live i fear for mine and my girlfriend's life every time i go anywhere i'm constantly thinking this is this the time she's gonna find me in public and follow me home i don't even leave the house anymore the police don't seem to care i can't help but think of if the gender was were, were gender roles were reversed if you the same probably um Please, someone help. I need advice. And then they put an edit at the bottom that the fiance's family, um, her dad is good friends with a lawyer, <laughs> a lawyer and a cop. And then if anything happens, he'll get them involved. Okay, number one, I don't know why the hell it's so cold in my room because it is 70 degrees outside. I'm almost damn near 80. And I don't understand what I got goosebumps and chills for. I'm just cold as hell. But first things first, I'm sorry you're going through that. Again, if anyone watching this is going through something similar, submit a story at the end of the law. Um, that was a lot. Like, that reading that should be tired. Because I'm like, wow. Like, I can't even believe or imagine what that feels like. Home, my suggestion would be. I'm sure this person looked it up, but ways to get a restraining order. And then my next move will be, and this is where y'all might think I'm crazy, but what I would do is I'm going 180 on this. And I'm going to follow, would that even be the number 180 or 360? I'm going 180 on this, and I'm following this woman home to see where she lives. And hear me out. <laughs> Don't unsubscribe for me yet. No, I'm just kidding. Um... What I would do is, I know your address now, right? And I'm talking to you, no, I'm just kidding. I know your address now, and depending on the state you live in, I guess you can call the state or the police department to conduct a wellness check on a person. So, I know your address now. I'm calling the police to do a wellness check on you. And a wellness check is when, I guess, I think, I don't think in Massachusetts they do it where I'm from, but, um... 
it's when they come to your house and see how you're doing. Let me let me get the proper term so I'm not just like okay. Also called a police welfare check. In the United States and Canada, a wellness check is an in-person visit from one or more law enforcement officers in response to a request from a friend or family member who's concerned about the person's mental health. So with that being said, I would suggest that because clearly this person has mental issues like you can tell. Um, and, you know, we're not trying to diagnose people incorrectly or anything, but something seems off. And I would definitely think this is the appropriate time to do that wellness check situation and hopefully that they notice something is off and that they can admit her to the proper situations, organizations to help this person because it seems like no one around her is telling her it's bad. Um, I don't necessarily know if sitting down and talking with her and asking her what's her problem will be a good idea. Um... But you definitely need to, that would be like my end all be all, like in my only option really. Or if you want to get crazy, I'm moving out the country. Like it's just going to have to be that. Um, keep everything, you know, if you're in a situation like this, keep all the evidence you have. Um, take a lot of photos. If you see this person, take a photo. iPhones, take information from where you are, location, date, time, um, Keep an evidence flat file of it, and you can bring it to police officers, I'm hoping, and show them your your folder. Be like, this is every day this person has looked at me. This is how they look at me when they're stalking me. Um, here's videos of how they stare at me. Um, I don't know if really, I mean, and this is me kind of like just referring back to movies and shit and like timeline and law and order, but like, I don't even know if I want to cons like put you in a harm's danger or is harm's way. Is that how you say it? Um, would I go talk to this person? Yes, to get them caught up on some like I'm bringing a sneaky camera, sneaky recording device. I bring this in my jacket. No, I'm kidding. I bring a little tiny thing where I can sit down and say, "Why do you keep doing this?" You know, and they're like, if they're like, you know like not really with it um they would say like because i love you i'm obsessed with you whatever but if they're kind of like ahead of you they'll be like doing what you know so it's like that's the thing there's that there's that tug of war tug and pull um but overall i would say prioritize your safety first never see this person like if you have to go there or you have to sit and like try to get the truth out of this person you need to catch them up for evidence go with someone um, maybe go with the the dad or the lawyer and the, the cop that are friends. But hey, I'm just here with my friends. Or have them outside. Or whatever, whatever have you. Um, but yeah. And all of your witnesses are at your job. Your old job. So I think there's hope for you. And I think it's going to be okay. I just think we have to think a little bit ahead here. We have to kind of... I feel like this is one of the situations, unfortunately, where you kind of have to get in the head of the fucked up, the effed up person and just be one step ahead of them. And I'll leave it on that. This is the next one. Ready? This one might be really simple. Let's just like bring it back. Let's, let's roll it back in for a second because the last one was um, a little aggressive. But um, this one's title, How to Network Better to Obtain a Sweet Career. This is really easy. This, I could just answer this question right now. I'm just kidding. All right, let me, let's read this and let's do some advice. They say, hello everyone. I am job searching and I have been applying to many positions. I recently made it to the third round of a large company, but I did not get the role. First of all, why do jobs do that? Like, why do you need to talk to me four freaking times? I just wanted to say that out loud. I was in the top 7.6% out of the 79 people who applied for that role. What can I do so I can get hired at a full-time remote W-2 sales or why did he say it like that? W-2 sales? Isn't your W-2 or... I guess I'm gonna just assume that's just mean something else. Um, I was edged out by two candidates with six years experience of four of experience over me. What do I have to do so that I can get experience? Um, I have a master's. I won't lie. It hasn't been easy. I tried for full time. 
on my job. The company doesn't want to move myself and others into full time. I can't quit. I'm in the USA. I'm a female. I should mention that I follow with recruiters and nothing but a video chat here and there has resulted from it. I've connected with LinkedIn hiring managers and nothing comes out of it. I have re 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 reworked my resume many times. I've spoken to the state on the jobs they provide and they do not even do sales job. I was going to do in person. Um, she says that then I have a knack for connecting with people and I have a high sales IQ. Okay. So, really, you didn't even have to say all that information, just to be honest with you. Um, I don't know who's giving you that information of, like, that who, who were the candidates against you and things like that. Like, don't, moving forward, don't really ask that question is my opinion. I don't know if people really do this. I've never done that in my life. And the reason for that is, is because I feel like that would not make a difference. The company made their decision. I'm not about to sit here and argue with you that, yes, I should be hired because clearly you do not want me. You know what I'm saying? So those questions I will just keep to myself um, because I feel like not only that, you're not going to get the job even if you have a dispute about it. But it also makes you feel discouraged, which I feel like you're at this point. Now, you have a freaking master's degree. You can get any freaking job you want. Okay, like. Truly, I think you're fine. I think you're in that phase of damage control. You're like, oh my god, like, but I have a master's, but but I have this, but but these are my skills. And you might be bringing this energy into interviews, and it might be stressing people out. Okay, so my biggest advice is when you're in a situation where you need a job and networking, you need that and whatever. Always approach the situation as you already have. Like, you already have it, you know? And that's a lot of law of attraction stuff is you need to approach things like you already own it, you already whatever. When I go to interviews or networking events, I make sure that I just treat these people like they are friends, okay? And I'm not obviously going to be over here, like, nudging them, like, Jack, you are so funny, bro. Like, what the heck, bro? Like, bro, let's go smoke later. Like, obviously not, right? But, but what I'm saying is, you know... Talk to these people. Have you ever been? Think about it like, you know, when colleges do the first weeks or whatever, the what is it, orientation? Think about it that way. People don't know each other, but you're eager. You're already in a new place. The door just made a sound, but no one's home. I'm scared. Anyway, <laughs> um, think about it that way. You know, it's orientation time, yada yada you know we're all here for a reason you know never look too thirsty but never look too scared and never look too cocky about it you know and I don't even know if you're even going in like hey I got a master so what you got what you got for me like you know so what's always I feel like left a big impression on jobs when I replied to them is that I've been friendly I crack a joke here or there like nothing crazy very professional um Sometimes it depends on the person. Reading the person's energy really has helped, helped me go a long way. And always having questions to ask at the end of an interview. I feel like a question that's really helped me um, show my interest is, what does every day look like working here? Like, if I get hired, how will my day look? And that kind of puts it into the hiring manager's head. Like, okay, well, if we do see her working here, you'll be doing this and this and this. Being honest, um always get to a long way as well saying you know hey i'm nervous i won't be i won't lie like just be yourself like and don't make it about numbers like i don't know the biggest 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 advice is networking and job internships or interviews or, or internships is be yourself be friendly be you and act as if you have it already but don't be cocky don't be arrogant like sit down and think about that for a minute okay so let's say, for example, hey, I want to work at Sephora. I want to be one of the makeup girls in the front. I don't know the proper title name of that. You know, you walk in. Hey, it's really nice to meet you. You know, um, I feel like I'm like teaching a friend how to get a job. Um, hey, it's really nice to meet you. You know, whatever. Why do you think you're best for the job? You know, whatever. Watch YouTube videos like that, like things like that. Or have your friends do mock interviews with you. And please stop asking people 
what your ranking is. I don't know. Unless they're telling you that, then fine. But other than that, that's my advice to you. People were saying LinkedIn in the thing, the comments. And yes, LinkedIn is a great one. LinkedIn, Indeed, all of those things. And I don't want to make this video about how to apply for a job. Um, but more so the experience of dealing with that frustration. And I know we've all been there. If you've been there, send a story to the email below. And we're going to move on to our last story of the episode. Episode, episode, episode. I'm not excited. All right. So, I love this one because it's something I always think about. Just reading off the title. The last story of the day is titled, How Do You Figure Out For Sure That You Want Something? I already have the answer to that, but I'm going to read it. And let's see what their situation is. A little background. I'm in my late 20s and I live in a small town in America working a dead-end job. That's fine. We do it sometimes. A few years ago, I was telling my telling myself my dream to come move to LA oh, and become a stand-up comedian and writer. My eyes are going to water up because it's like... I'm sorry. I just people following the dreams makes me so emotional. It makes me so happy when they actually jump in and do it. Like, do y'all see my eyes? Like, it's the crying for me. Like, what's wrong with me? This is why I can't be a therapist. You see me crying? All right. Oh my god, I'm so dramatic. I'm, I'm on my period. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's it's that time of the month. So ignore me. I did an open mic and I liked it, but I never did it again. I also have never written a complete screenplay. And made a little effort to learn how over time other things besides pursuing my dream is what they wrote took priority and i put it out of the way way back burner i was i was working a kind of lame job at a liquor store but i enjoyed learning about the products and eventually decided that maybe i'd like to stay in that industry more things changed in my life and over the past six months or so i've been applying to jobs in the industry in a city that i visited a couple years ago and loved about 1200 miles away this morning, I had a phone call interview with the company. That is exactly what I was looking for, but I'm filled with doubt. I'm saying to myself, I visited the city once. Am I sure this is where, this is where I want to go? I kind of just ended up in this industry. Is there some other career path I'd rather pursue? Is it practical to go so far away? Um, would I be happy staying home, closer to home? But I'm also saying I need a change, and this is a good change. Why not move? I'm young, trying to myself. Um, am I just second guessing myself? So, I have a question because you're saying you ended up liking the liquor industry. Here's the good part about this. I feel like comedy, stand-up comedy, and liquor go hand-in-hand. Hand. Don't don't they? I've never been to a comedy, like, stand-up situation. But don't they usually have drinks and stuff there and whatever? Like, I think that could be really, really good for what you're trying to do. Like, you'll say you're in, you're giving your performance. And you say, hey, I see you drinking that Rhode Island Krispy Kreme. I, listen, I don't know no drink thing, so don't put no hate in the comments. I see you drinking that whatever over there. Reminds me of my mama or whatever. You know, I don't know how community. You see how bad I'm, I am at that? Absolutely not. Um, think about it that way. Use it to your advantage. I don't think your dream has to be in the back burner, you know? And I think if you really want it, you have to, you should go get that, like, for real. Like, and I mean that with my whole heart. Please don't put it in the back burner. If you're watching this and you have dreams, please don't put it in the back burner. Please follow them. Please follow them. Um, her, this person's dream to move to LA and the television writing. Take that time to learn how. You know, you said you didn't really take the time to do it. Take that time to learn it. You know, I feel like as kids, when kids start to learn that, okay, the whole astronaut thing might not be too realistic. I mean, there are kids that actually go and do it. I saw TikTok the other day of a woman that was like, Telling my husband I want to be an astronaut, him pursuing my dream with me, and then she actually gets to, like, you know. So, I feel like once kids realize the unrealistic dreams are going to be realistic, but they still have a dream as a child. Like, let's say, 
maybe around 10 if you if, from 10 years old up if there's something you always say you want to do that you keep 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 saying you want i feel like in your heart that's your calling like you know and sometimes in life we have to do little things and things that we don't like to get to where we want to be but the fact that you're in this the liquor industry i don't even think you know that you're you're a step ahead like you can do this and you're moving to a new place these are people you don't know you'll probably have audiences you don't know if you go do stand up there again in little spots um these shows i feel like are only nighttime usually do it like hustle hustle for that thing you want television writing i'm sure there's a bunch of youtube videos on that anything you want to follow your dreams on i'm sure there's a youtube video on how to do it Maybe LA doesn't have to be the place where you follow that dream. I've heard that LA is super crowded. I've seen YouTubers even say like, no, I live in Texas. Oh, I live in Atlanta instead. Oh, I live in Florida instead. LA's too crowded, whatever. Or LA has fake people, whatever they've been saying. I've never been there. So, you know, I know you're saying that the job was lame and I'm assuming maybe you're going to work at a different liquor, liquor store in a different city. Um, those are your clients. Make those your audience. Make, crack those jokes. I've seen so many TikToks where people run bodegas and they clown the um, customers and they have that relationship. Literally, you can do that. You can do just that. You sell those liquors, whatever. Make that your space, you know, and make them TikToks. Open a TikTok account. Clown with your with your clients, with your regulars. I know there'd be regulars at liquor stores like. It's really thinking about how to implement your dream into the things you do that you have to do to get back. That is my number one advice on, you know, and answering the title of this. And I'm going to actually physically write to this person some advice because I feel like they really, really need it. Um, how do you figure out that you want something for sure? My number one thing is always just do it do it and then you'll, you don't if you don't start you will never know kind of deal like have you guys ever heard that quote you won't know until you try that's what i always live by like once i do it then i'm like okay i don't like it you know or okay that was a fail you know so it's kind of like this series you know i don't have my audience like but guess what i'm gonna guess it done i'm gonna guess it done because it's people out there that need advice not necessarily my fans, even though that's what I would love to do, is give advice to fans, like people that like me and my work and support me. Um, and I don't even want to call them fans, like supporters, because, you know, there's a difference between a fan and a supporter, I feel like, in my heart. So, just like you, my goal is something, right? But I'm using a different way to sell myself. Your goal is comedian slash TV writer, television writer. You work at this place. That is your audience. Tell them eventually, hey, I got a comedy stand up tonight, you know, Saturday night, if you want to come slide the card. I know some jobs uh, prohibit that, like, they're like, nah, you can't be selling stuff like that. It's fine. Sneak your way through it. Jobs are always common. The liquor industry, I'm sure there's many jobs in that. You lose a job, you win some, you lose some. And that's my advice. And that goes for anyone who's trying to pursue something that feels like way bigger than them, you know? And my tip has always been, don't see it as that, like... See it as it's yours. You're meant to have it. That's it. Period. Period. That was the last one for the day. I really loved the note that we ended on. Again, if you have anything you want to submit, anything you relate to, leave it in the email below. We will read it. We will give you advice. No hate here. Yeah, guys. I really enjoyed today's episode. I'm so happy to be back doing Zanjita's tea. And I can't wait to see where the series keeps going. And when y'all finally submit, like period but listen no rush i understand it's intimidating it's scary i actually submitted a story the other day to a youtuber and i was like oh my god like i kind of regret it i was like oh my god because it's like i'm one of those people that's like you know when you spill in the mouth you're like okay i shouldn't have done all that right like that's fine we're, we're human people do it whatever don't feel ashamed like i'm these people are choosing to help you you know what i'm saying so if there's anything in your heart that inclines you today to submit something or if you want to email me after and say hey girl i changed my mind please don't read that it's fine we don't have to read it it's fine no pressure no nothing again the video will be linked below for more rules on how to submit i'm gonna put on the screen again how to submit some rules etc the emails at the bottom of the screen as you know 
please follow me on social medias because I've been very active on there. Um, I no longer have my job. So, yeah, I've been doing this kind of full time. So, if you know what I mean. So, um, <clears throat> your support is very, very appreciated. <laughs> Zanji does on all socials, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. You know, we do hair videos here but this is my really fun series that i like to do on the side but i offer advice cute little quotes on instagram sometimes um tiktok hair videos all that funny videos like follow me on there i follow back i'm very interactive and and yeah guys thank you so much for watching today's video i'm so happy that you took the time to watch this and i can't wait to see you in the next one i really appreciate you visiting don't forget to subscribe because the youtube subscription has more than you know and liking the video so that I know to keep making these videos. So thank you for watching. Have a great one and I'll see you in the next one.